Fuller's going on about this um, Met Police issue to do with his death threat and then being passed on to Essex Police. It's a little bit like when someone put all my address all over the internet, a guy from Stockport and West Yorkshire Police were... They actually acted, but then they passed it on to Manchester and then Manchester didn't do anything. Um, that was when my channel was up, but well, that was when I was uploading loads and loads of videos and doing all the on-site stuff, but I didn't have time to actually spend time on YouTube. Um, we're just throwing videos up there. Um, uh, and he was, he put my address everywhere, um, provoking people to, you know, make use of it. Um, and Manchester police didn't do anything to the guy. So I can sympathize with Jonathan. So look, this is the guy who is the Ju Ben, Ben Julian Harrington, QPM, Queen's Police Medal. Interesting. Um, now, I forgot the name of the inspector that Jonathan said that who gave me a response, which I wanted to try find. Who's this? She. This is a woman there. She looks quite friendly, but what I wanted to know is that oh, they're always there with the medals, aren't they? Always awards. The 25th commendation. What date is it today? It's actually the 27th. Actually, the first story that came up when I typed in police chief was one of someone's being prosecuted. New chief constable takes the oath. I wonder what it is. I wonder if they've thrown this up since they know that I've been on to that. Um, this is what I'm on to at the moment. Oh, hold on. Say in October. 27th of November. So this was... Um, this is saying that it is October the 4th. Unless this has just been inserted... The new Chief Constable takes the oath. New Chief Constable of Essex Police has formally taken the position today. Ben Julian B.J. Harrington is the 13th officer to serve October the 4th. When? Is this quite old or what? He swore the oath in front of the Police and Fire Commissioner Roger Hurst, Assistant Chief, in front of the Fire oh, Police and Crime Commissioner. Right. So he did the oath... So, right, so the police chief doesn't do an oath in front of a judge or the king. Um, he takes the oath in front of a, the, the commissioner, the police commissioner. That's interesting. Not one of the inspectorate of the police either. Or, you know, Prince Philip, um, you know, crosses out and up to die. And the proper officer in the staff, a special ceremony, police had quarters. Right, so it's the police commissioner who he takes his oath. But the thing is that um, police constable's already taken an oath. It's a different... A police constable is a, is a proper officer compared to a um, PCSO. Chief of Staff started his policing career, blah, blah, blah. So where's the oath then? I can grant privilege in... I need to find what this... Uh, I wonder if it tells you what the oath is. I haven't looked at the police oath yet. I need to look at it. I don't know if the chief one's any different from the um, normal police oath. Right, so this is the police oath. So this is how the police oath goes. And I don't, I don't think that the police chief is... I don't think it's any different to, to a normal constable. Although when he's chief, um, he'll have certain duties in front of the commissioner but that, that he gets bestowed on him. But I don't think that he's... The police chief is he, he, he's only in charge by rank and file. As for upholding and policing the law, I'm, I'm quite sure that all police constables are still just a constable um, except for when the, the, the chief position grants um, rank and file... Uh, merits or, or of command, I think, within the police force of, of officers, not actually in policing 
um, with the public in, in like authorizing certain, he can authorize certain things and command officers. Anyway, this is it. This is what I was looking for. I wasn't going to bother looking it up, but seeing that Jonathan's got onto this old Essex police business, I, the first website that I checked, um, it, it, one of the police officers had been prosecuted or uh, he, he, he was up in court. I'll go to that in a minute because I've just, my other battery ran out of my phone, so I've got this one now. I do solemnly, sincerely and truly declare and affirm that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of constable. Well, that's, you know, pursuing all the legislation and law which anybody can use it uh, with fairness, integrity, diligence, and impartiality, and that I will uphold fundamental hu or human rights. Ha! You've got to be kidding me. You have got to be taking the plonker and accord equal respect to all people according to law. Right, that is interesting. That's very, 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 very interesting, according to law. So, if we're investigating, so if you would use citizen's arrest, you would only use it because someone you believe to have broken the law. If you were pursuing someone who'd stolen a loaf of bread and you were uh, trying to apprehend them because they broke the law, you're, you're according to the law. That's if you as a citizen chose to. You might choose not to enforce the law. You might cho choose to let them go, right? But the thing is, once you've taken this oath, really you're not allowed to let them go because you've sworn an oath to uphold the law. So if someone was stealing bread and you did not act to stop them, then you are allowing them to break the law and you are breaking your oath. See what I mean? Do you understand? Now, that is interesting. It, any normal citizen hasn't taken that oath. So if, you know, me, Tom, Dick or Harry saw him stealing bread, I might see him steal bread and I might not do anything. I might, I might let him. Now, this is, I, 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 as a citizen, I, I'm making a judgment, Right. Uh, whether according to the law I could choose to act or if I don't think that he should be punished for it, then I might not act. But I don't have to uphold the law, although I ain't taken the oath that I will uphold it. But the thing is, there is certain, you know, failing to report an offence supposedly could be an offence, but then who's going to report me, you know? Um, but, I do, you know... Getting, you know, obstructing the police, it's illegal to obstruct a police officer, but it, you know, it, it's illegal to not report a crime. Um, I th that's it. If you do, if you fail to report a crime, it's meant to be an offense, but that doesn't mean you have to apprehend them. You can citizens arrest them, you've got the power to do it, and you can use the criminal law at 1967 to pursue them. And if anyone obstructs you, then they're breaking the law, right? Now, why am I talking about all this? Because of the oaths. Now, this is very interesting because I would love to bring up the can of worms, the can of beans that is assisting offenders. Assisting offenders. If, I've, if I'm a citizen and someone robs a loaf of bread and I choose not to act, I haven't taken the oath that I will uphold the law. But if I fail to report it, in a way I'm assisting the offender, right? And and really, I'm committing an offence unless someone grasses me up for not reporting it. But if, if no one does anything. But this is, we are citizens. You know, we are the, 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 we, we make judgment. We, we, we're making a judgment, really, um, you know, which is an interesting position to be in. But let's get this right. The police, in this oath here that I'm reading in front of me, according to Google, so far as it is, there is no require. There is no um, oath to not do favour. There is no favour in this oath. There is favour in the judge's oath, prevents him from doing favours uh, for judgment. Uh, le lesson um, sentences uh, for favour. 
Now, this is the thing. Assisting offenders, you're helping them. Uh, you're, you're doing them a favour. They're, they're doing you a favour. You're doing the favour. You, you might choose not to prosecute them. And the... Um, you take them onto the team. They might have broken the law, but uh, you're going to do. You, 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 you're assisting them, um, and they're assisting you. Assisting offenders, they're assisting the police. They broke the law, and the police are making use of them and choosing not to prosecute them, which really is well, actually, um, according to law. But then again, you know. Uh, they are actually choosing to aid uh, and help uphold the law. So if they couldn't fall under it, 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 assisting, by the way, assisting offenders is immunity. And there's a proper, it, it, it's in the Crown Prosecution Service uh, repertoire for things they can do. And there are different levels of immunity, but they choose to give them immunity by taking them onto their side and they will help the police uh, in their casework. It's, it's pretty much... It's effectively very similar, or like the right to petition. And the fact that the juries, before they were sat there making decisions, the juries actually went, uh, did policing and actually informed the king, uh, the government, on people who were breaking the law before the police. So it, it is really policing. So I was actually right. I, I was correct, um, really, about that, w which I had a hunch, and then I thought it wasn't, and then I found that it was. So... Now, there are some interesting things going on here because if the police um, will, will hold all people according to law, well, how come they're not going to prosecute them then? If they broke the law, they're not, they're not upholding the law. But if, if, if that person helps them to uphold the law, they are then... Um, petitioning the criminal case with the on the police side right and it's almost like community service you know they're doing a service to the community it's almost like helping the police kind of is a um what do you call it a um token a, a payment for the crime really sort of if you like community service um the unpaid work so to say uh, sort of, if you would like to see it like that. Now, that's very interesting for sitting offenders, but there, it, there is no oath of favour only to uphold the law. Now, if if the witnesses are going to be used and aid you, um, and then they are really doing a good service to the community for the crime, um, in a way, so it, 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 I, I can kind of see how that figures into it. So, but there's, there's no now. I said to when I was arrested, I said, you know, um, you know, can we do any deals? They said, no deals, no deals, no deals. Well, that's untrue because they do deals with witnesses that they want to use themselves when they want to. Um, now, when it comes to no deals, well, hmm, interesting. So, no deals, then riddle me this. No deals, riddle me this. Oh, I've got an offer for you. What's that? Conditional offer. Oh, have you really? Oh, I thought you said no deals. Well, if you pay this fine, I won't take you to court. I thought you said no deals. No deals. No deals. No deals. No deals. Well, if I, well, that's a deal, isn't it? Pay this, give us this 60 quid for this fine and um, we will summon you to court. You know, and we'll just give you uh, a fixed penalty. Uh, and if you in, in, if you give us information on who was driving the car, uh, we won't take action against you. That's another good deal. I thought, I said, I thought there was no deals. I thought there was no deals. You know, if you think I've done the crime, then someone means to court. Oh, no, no, no. No deals, no deals. Well, that's a deal, right? So now the judge isn't allowed to um, do favours, like reduce a sentence if someone admits guilt for exchange for admitting guilt or in exchange for information or in exchange for reporting someone else or if you if you admit the crime, right? But the thing is, so, so this now, you see, those conditional offers are effectively, well, it's a notice of intended prosecution. They're intending to prosecute you and, and they're going to do it according to law. Now, the thing is, that the problem is that um, 
that if they say, and this is in the um, claim of right, by the way, and it's in the in the judicial oath and, and the allegiance oath and so forth, so they're not allowed. The judges aren't allowed to say, right, you know, if you if you plead guilty, I'll give you my lenient sentence. You know, if, if they plead guilt, if they plead um, not guilty, but then they're found guilty, then they could get a harsher sentence. But they're not allowed to. Um, they're not allowed to do deals with judges. They're not, and also the judge isn't allowed to compel them to um, admit guilt if they're not guilty in exchange for being more lenient. And also, really, they're not allowed to. They're not allowed to say, you know, you know, if you pay six pound fine, then you know, we we won't put you to prison, or we won't um, prosecute, we won't um, charge you with an offence. You know, we won't summon you to court and put you through. Even even going through a court process is to go to trial is an ordeal, right? So it's a burden. So to say, look, we will have put. The, I'll tell. You, I'll do you a favour. Uh, we want someone to court and put you through the burden of going to court. Um, if you pay, if you just give us sixty quid, no, send us sixty quid in. Um, we'll put a little mark on your driving license, um, you know, and we will we will put you on trial. You know, it happens again. You know, all right, go and then, um, you know, um, I'll tell you what, I'll do you a deal. Um, if you, um, you know, pay sixty quid again, uh, we will put you on trial. Put we'll put you through a trial. Uh, you know, tell us who were driving the car. We won't put you on trial. Tell us who were driving the car. You know, admit actually you're guilty. Well, actually, what if you're not guilty? This is a thing. Well, I might not be. I might not be guilty. If you're, if you don't think you're guilty, if you do not believe you are guilty of the crime, but they say, I'll tell you what. If you admit the crime, though, if you if you, if you admit that you've done it, come on, and uh, we'll just give you sixty quid fine. Come on. Admit you've done it, you know, admit you've done it, but you might believe that you're not, you're not and I'll do you a favour, give you 60 quid fine. How's that? Right? That's illegal. Now, the problem is, it's the, the, the favour is not in the police chief's oath, that is in the judge's oath. And it's the police chief who's giving out these conditional offers, but he's, it, it, the thing is, the interesting thing is that uh, some police chiefs are made justices of the peace and they've got to take that oath. Like, so P I think Peter Fye's taken that. I I've got a feeling that Peter Fye took that oath. He's done enough of allegiance because he's been knighted, so we know that for certain, because he's Sir Peter Fye. He's got to take an oath of allegiance. Um, so I, I need to see what the police chief oath is now with the commissioner, whether it's exactly the same or if it is slightly different. But the, the, the constable has not got... Um, now, the interesting thing is there's there's no oath to God in this oath. There is no oath to God. And it do, I don't see an oath of allegiance in this oath. They might have to do an oath of allegiance as well. I'm not sure. I don't see it. Maybe there's another one. Now, there's more of an oath in the Cub Scout oath, which you take in front of witnesses, in front of a congregation of um, your peers, the public, the common peers, uh, and and uh, your 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 leader. Which the Cub Scouts and the, the the Scouts usually people go there before they join the army. I've taken the oath to do my duty to God and the Queen, uh, and to uphold the. Cub Scout law, which effectively is the 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 moral law, um, I think it is the law as well. But we'll have to check about it again. Dib 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 dab dab dab. Put a pen in an ink pot uh, and dab it on some paper. I've made an oath. So and then what's important? I said in the other video, you've got these oaths. Like so, when it, when you write to the Queen or King, if you do the letter properly, patented. You know, you've heard of this letter patent or whatever, but well, let, let call it letter proper. Uh, at the bottom, you put an oath of allegiance. You know, be your servant, be your you know, uh, be your obedient servant. That's an oath, right? So if you petition the king or queen directly, you're putting a legal oath in a swearing of allegiance. Particularly if you're petitioning them with a case and you've got people signing it, and that if you if that petition has got the oath in it and everyone signs the petition. Everyone who's signing the petition is swearing to the legal oath. 
and if it also if you go further to do it really 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 properly put a statement of truth in there i swear that all facts um and evidence that we touch are true which the petitioners committee don't even give you that or whether you're not whether or not you cannot be held to any commitments um for petitioning the king but you could choose to put that in there i did the oath multiple times by petition to the monarch but then when they weren't upholding my rights and when they were denying me justice um by due lawful process then i thought right well they're breaking the law now um and i've done everything proper and and they're not so fuck them uh bollocks to them so i said you know to her majesty i said you know you can stick it i said like you know um, you know, I'm not your obedient servant anymore because um, you're not uh, you're not upholding the law on your side. So, but the thing is, the what I like about the um, Cub Scout Code law is that you do your duty to God and the Queen, but God comes first always. Now, ironically, in jury service, um, you don't have to you don't have to swear on the Bible, particularly if you're foreign. I've mentioned this in the other video. That raises alarm bells for me, not that I'm a devout Christian, but as a man of truth and honesty, and I like things to be done properly or people not to lie. It's interesting that if you were uh, doing a case that relied on divine intervention, which is a legal basis, divine intervention, or if you were outside an abortion clinic and you were Catholic or uh, Christian um, that didn't believe in abortions, then uh, you could get arrested and so forth. Now, if you've got a jury and they're all atheists and they don't believe in God or, you know, they don't believe in divine intervention and it's relied on the evidence, then you're going to be stuck, <laughs> uh, you know, particularly if they're all Buddhists or all Sikhs and they took the Sikh oath or the Buddhist oath and they don't believe in Christian God. You, you really screwball scrambled then because you ain't got a jury who believes there's no believers on the jury. So how they can do the duty to God first, foremost, then the monarch is one fathoms. One fathoms how that is going to be possible. And you might be lucky to get one Christine on the jury um, who does believe in divine intervention or, you know, he, he, he does, even though the law says, you know, you shouldn't be doing this outside this clinic or whatever or protesting, they, they might like, you know, in the Extinction Rebellion with Ian Bray and more recently breaking the window, they might still say not guilty. Right, because the believers they they, they they don't believe in abortion. This is an example. I'm not. This has nothing to do with like you know. I don't want. To, this is not an opinion on abortion. This is just. This is just legal law, right? So, you know, that's what I don't like about that oath. What they're doing now, mixing and mashing it up. It, it's almost like you know. You know, it's like Bon Jovi doesn't live on anymore. You know. Um, you know. Um, it's almost like, you know, um, keep the faith. you got to keep the faith. Keep the faith. We know, no one's keeping the faith anymore. So not not in that faith. Um, and God knows what faith came before it because they've pretty much eradicated it um, amid uh, extraneous efforts to eradicate what came before it. So, you know, um, now, so that... So let's go to the, uh, you know, the, 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 the court procedures, the judge. So they're not the judge. I, I don't just think it's the judge, though. I don't. I know that that judge's oath on the favour. I know that that is, it is that claim of right clause. Uh, whether it was even earlier than that as well and got into the claim of right from before or whether that is the entry point of it. I know that that claim of right clause, that is, sets the statute principle. That sets the st statute precedent in law that you can't um, offer favours uh, in return for information or lower sentences. You're not allowed to... Um, so that is why I think that it's in the oath. I think it's in the oath for that reason, and and it, it is the same thing. That that I know that that it, it those two are that that's it. Now the thing is, the judge takes that oath, but that law in the sixteen eighty eight Bill of Rights 
doesn't it, it says that the person the person can't be punished for well can't be punished for capital crime well if if you know if you're going to give them a notice of intended prosecution you're going to intend to punish them and you're going to intend to gather evidence on them and lay the evidence to punish them um because you have um according to law but according to law it's not lawful to get information from them with a promise of a uh, lower sentence. It legally, the, the, the legal framework, you can only be prosecuted by due for law process, right? You, you, can't, you, you can't have a, a, a legal process where you would get information from the Mara confession in the promise of a lower punishment or sentence. So, um, because it's illegal. So that means that you, you can't, um, well, according to law, it's illegal to, to get it's evidence from them or information from them uh, and try them with it. So it doesn't matter whether the judge took the oath or not. The police officer's breaking the law. The constable's breaking the law. I don't need to see what the chief's oath is. So no, notices of intended prosecution, which say if you admit that you've broken the law uh, we're not going to put you to trial and we're not going to put you through the ordeal of being summoned to court and have to defend yourself, we're just going to give you a fine that is a favour, that is a favour of a reduced punishment if you give over information or also even if you confess, if you if you give a confession we will um, do you a favour of a reduced punishment, that is illegal, so because it's a favour, and so this is what what um, the entire um, no, NIP system, notice of intended prosecution system, is based on, and it's it's, it's illegal. Now that, but then I this assist the assisting offenders thing is a little bit different. Now, if you weren't the driver. And if you gave them information of who the driver was, then you're helping the police. Almost like if you saw someone stealing bread and you informed on them, right? But you don't have to... The thing is, if you see someone steal bread and you make a judicial... Um, you know, if you judge them by yourself and say, I'm not going to report them, I don't think they should be prosecuted, right? Well, if you don't report them, supposedly you're breaking the law. But not if you've been sworn as a jury, because you're allowed to make that decision, right? Um, and you know, also, um, also, um, you know, you, you know, you you can you can you can you can the law's there to use. You don't actually need to take this oath to use the law. When you've taken this oath, know that this is why police officers never let people off. Or, or if once they're, you know, it's very, very hard to get them to drop the case. You know, it's a miracle that, you know, this police chief is not pursuing uh, this death threat on um, Jonathan Fuller. Because, you know, they've got to, they've taken the oath to pursue crimes now the thing is they've got a lot less tenuous evidence on people for you know various driving offenses but they, they, they adamantly won't drop them you know if you get you know if the police want to charge you or do it, it's there you know meant to be like a bull in a china shop they won't stop so this is interesting with jonathan m fuller because according to this oath they've got to when the law's been broken they have to um, uphold the law. That's their duty to us, right? Um, so it's very, very interesting under Jonathan M. Fuller. Uh, I, I, I think that the um, police chief and the constable that he mentioned, the, the inspector, likely is breaking the police oath. If Tim Crossland himself, as a legal professional, can show that that person did actually break the law not just this conditional threat or whatever um then he could prove that the police chief is breaking his oath then right 
Um, Tim Crossland could do that for Fuller. That depends if Crossland can show that um, he did break the law, but the police is looking saying that he, that he didn't or they're not even going to investigate it. So this is where Jonathan's saying to me, well, you know, you need a professional lawyer. Well, I'm saying, well, you know, but I, I, I know... I, I know this much. I, I know this much that um, you can get Tim Crossland as he's a, he's a legal professional. If Tim Crossland um, gives an opinion, a legal opinion, you can, you can get like a legal advice, can't you? I'm sure if he signs something legally and says, "Well, he has broken the law," the police then can. I, I think they've got to prosecute. Uh, also, Jonathan M. Fuller can. Um, Petition the police to pursue it. If you got like twenty signatures from the public, um, you might you might have to be compelled to do it then uh, by petition of police uh, because it, it it the thing is is if it's in the public interest, this is like for a public inquiry. This is the the whole point of a petition. The thing with the petition is either you show evidence, factual evidence, or if the public wants, if there's public's interest. In the same way, like Ian Bray kind of says, like, you know, um, in the Ian Bray case, like, you know, the jury said, oh, we just disregard the law. Uh, we're not going to convict. But the, the, the public can say, well, you know, we want the police to pursue it, um, even if, you know, they don't think that it's got a strong chance of success. Um, the, the, the public could say, well, try. You know, we want you to try and prove it because, you know, it's possible to go and get more evidence and, you know, it, 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 there's a chance. It, on the public, uh, if the public petitioned the police, they could get signatures uh, because the, pub, the the police have to do what the public want. Um, so, you know, you can petition about criminal matters as well. This is the one thing the petition committee don't tell you about. Um so, and also, there's this avenue to the king directly as well, which is what the 1688 bill's based on, but I didn't realise that actually is a... Um, not not appealing to the Crown Court, then appealing to the High Court, then appealing, you know, to... high. You know, actually, from the start, you can petition the king for an investigation, which now you can get public... In a minister can direct a public inquiry. Uh, you cannot actually petition for that or ask for it. Um, I don't know whether they'll give you it or not, but you can, and you could get signatures to to you know compel. You know this is what I, I'm. In, I was in pursuit of public inquiry, but I know for a fact. I know for certain that that um, I I know they're breaking the law with this. The assisting offenders thing, like I said, they are doing them a favour, but. If they've broken the law and they're an offender, really they're doing them a favour. But the thing is, there are other people who've committed more serious crimes or worse crimes. And really, I really, what they're doing is, I think the only way they can have this is sitting offenders lawfully is because there are two legal principles on it. And the first is that. If the person does um, uh, agree to assist the police, he is petitioning along with the police in the criminal case, and he is therefore, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 he, 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 he's like me, like me when I was petitioning uh, an investigation. You know, this is it. He, he's uh, got the right to petition immunity because he's he's been absorbed into it, and he's helping, right? But if he's not taken on board and helping, um, he, 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 if they choose not to prosecute him, then it, it, it would it would be it would be that that would be doing him a favour. But the the thing is that also in a way, offences can be you can get a fine, you can get custodial, or you can get community service. Now you, I can see how it, it can go into community service. Uh, because they're doing a service then to the public, uh, unpaid, being an informer for the police. Therefore, really, it's kind of a little bit like accepting a conditional offer as a punishment, really. Um, 
it's interesting to note that if if they if they did police did charge them and it would have been quite serious like custodial or something but they ended up only doing lower hours of police service community service that could be a lower sentence that there's some very 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 borderline stuff going on here but Really, I I I actually do think that it's that they're, they're petitioning, they're doing what the original jury did, which is like you know the uh, call it the lynching mob, really, uh, or, or or us if we wanted to uh, do policing, right? Which is what we're all using the right to petition immunity, but in political cases to the House of Parliament, Westminster, not in a criminal case or a civil case which we're not really getting that recognised or applied, or we're having difficulty doing that, although the jury is starting to give it to us. But it, it, we've already... The thing is, if you've written the petition out and you've laid it to Parliament or the King, and you uh, and even you go further, you know, you can't be held to any commitments, but, well, you know, if you throw the statement of truth in there, you know, the volunteer to put it in there of your own will, and the allegiance thing, you literally... This is what... And the public are all signing it as well, you you effectively have, I mean, you, you're getting into this, you know, you're not just making an oath to uphold the law according to the law, you're in pursuit of making law. We, we are getting law made and changed. You know, i.e. by I'm positioning this government for a change in the law and we will pursue this matter uh, in order to uh, what we believe is the right thing to do to get the law changed or made on behalf of the public, here we, the undersigned, this is our intention and goal. So must it be, whatever. You know, I've seen more out of the Cub Scouts than this Constable of, particularly with the God part of it. Um, and they've... God is losing quickly. The Pope really should be concerned. Although now you know, it's questionable what Pope Francis is up to with the world, you know, the WHO and the WEF and so forth. Um, Pope Francis's hat should be on fire, you know, uh, because <laughs> there's no um, religion left in the judicial process from what I can see, particularly, particularly if you're relying on divine intervention, you know. Because um, no one believes in it anymore, so um, you know it, it, that's interesting. So um, that's where I am with it. I th those conditional offers are illegal. Now I, I'm I, the, and the only way they can have assisting offenders, it, they're not allowed to do them deals or favor. So it, it's not a they're not. No deals, no deals. It's not the sort of deal what you think would get a reduced sentence. And I don't really think that it's regarded as community service because if they did that deal and their informing or assisting was considered as community service and it would be lower than what they would be given for the offence, then you're looking at trouble uh, with the law. What's actually happening here? So therefore, it only has to be on the. It can only be on the basis of. It, it, it only it can only be on the basis of the uh, right to petition immunity legal principle, which is helping police officers, and which I now know that it, it is the public who went and uphold the law and informed um to the king and possibly even you know apprehended um the criminals before the police force or or to the c constable of the area or the sheriff so it, it is us but then the public also got put on the jury but you get charged with a certain oath i've said in the other video when you when you're having charges against you you're still being charged um and when you go up onto court to give evidence, you you've got to, um, you know, you got to do all this. But the thing is, when you're defending yourself, you, you are charged into you you are you are you know you you are you know you are um 
you're officially officialo in you know you, you can you've got the power of defense which means you've got the the power of law which means that you know you can say this is what i said before you know um uh, you know this you know you 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 really had to, you'd really need to be someone like that Charles Wells guy in Canada who who challenged the government like you really got to be you really got to like courts and you really have to like court proceedings um and you really got to like you know um but I don't and not many people do because uh I've been there but it's corrupt that's why uh, they're meant to be the ones trying criminals or challenging criminals, challenging the jury. But but I, it, from what my experience, they 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 are criminals, and that is why I don't like it, and that's why a lot of people don't like it because they are uh, trying to coerce you into making a different plea to what you believe, or lying and saying you can't plead because you're too busy, or. Um, in, uh, are missing various procedure rules from the criminal procedure rules, missing them out, and uh, not doing it properly. Slack, um, crown prosecutors like used car salesmen in cheap suits. Um, you know, with, with very flimsy um, presentations until you get extension rebellion coming into the court, and then they've got to pull the socks up and make it look like the you know professional or make the extra effort. But this is the thing, you know, if you are facing criminal charges and you believe that you are not guilty and you know where there's evidence to prove that and the police have refused to do it, then you have to, you command the police with the judge. This is the thing, Your Honour, you know, there are fingerprints in this house, uh, I'm quite certain of it, I'm convinced, uh, I'm, you know, and I want this, this search, you know, tell them to go get them. Or if not, then I want a warrant myself and I'll go do it, um, give me the warrant, you know. Um, to, you know, to get evidence to prove that you are not guilty. This is the thing. So no, no one, you know, this, this is, you need to be like that Charles Wells guy in Canada who literally proved that, um, you know, half the Canadian um, constitution is, um, you know, uh, unraveling like um, a, woolen, a woolen blanket, um, a soggy woolen blanket with a sheep running off uh, down the road, you know? Um, the, the the HSBC Adventures of the Royals, something like a, a Branson adventure that turned into a, a country uh, or something, you know, that wasn't properly well established. But, you know, he, 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 he you know, apparently he won those cases. Um, I don't know whether he's right or not, but I know that he won them officially. Hello. So, you know, this is it. Um, so, um, you know, that's it. And and actually, I really want to go to that. So I, fa I found this other earth now, but I want to go to that page with that police guy in Essex. This is it here. This is what I wanted to show you at the start. Essex police settled claim after the investigating officer was jailed. This was, all right, so this was, this is quite a, a while back. Essex police settle a claim after the investigating officer was jailed. DC Patterson. Been having an affair with one another. What the hell? DC pa the CPS charged DC Patterson and colleague DC Pollard, whom have been having an affair with one another. Ha! With three court counts each of willful misconduct themselves in public office by falsifying charging decisions, forging a signature, misrepresenting evidence and destroying exhibits. Well, what happened? Where my stickers go? My stickers went missing. I've had to put witness appeal in the newspaper as well because um, some more of my artwork's gone missing. In fact, I made a special painting for Claire and it's gone missing in the post. And I want, I, that is only one of that painting. And there was like five paintings and that was the best one. And it's gone, someone's stolen it in the post. One of the criminal charges DC Patterson related directly to her actions when they investigated in Miss Stevens' case, but just were denied DC Patterson Pollard. So the matter went to trial in the Central Criminal Court, Oh Bailey, where Mrs. Stevens and her mother were someone's to pretend. Um, 
that old bailey that's where they've got that plaque on the wall isn't it um of that pen case that's to do with the jury shall not be punished for their verdict or whatever although they did get punished he came out and said the jury shall not be punished for their verdict but we've just punished them basically <laughs> the jury shall not be punished for their verdict but we just have but we'll put a plaque on the wall and we won't do it again where is the um Oh, this is it. Look, form. Oh, you're a 